surround humanity old in its depth, resources, and mysteries since ages. Oil and gas are two of the most valuable resources today, which have to be dug out from beneath the oceans. One of the top names daring into this sector is Lawson and Tubro Limited. LNT provides turnkey solutions to the upstream hydrocarbon sector. The Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Limited awarded the Mumbai High North project to LNT Limited. The fabrication of MNP and MLQ jackets were done in the 400,000 square meters of state of the art LNT modular fabrication yard in Sohar, Oman. The fabrication of the gigantic MNP jacket structure begins with the removal of a layer of earth, precasted concrete slippers with steel plates embedded on the surface are laid in the slot. Prefabricated skid beam is then placed over these slippers. They are first aligned and then welded with the steel plates of slippers. The guided slot of the skid beam is filled with layers of wax and slip coat. Over this layer sits the timber runners in parts fitting into each other. Separately, fabricated launch cradle is placed on both the sets of timber. They are then bolted and locked with the timber runners. Five leg pots are placed on both the sets of cradle. Leg tubulars are strengthened by welding internal ring stiffeners. Four such tubulars are then joined to form a leg. Legs 2A and 3A thus fabricated are placed over leg pots with the help of crawler cranes Leg 2B and 3B are fabricated on the sides respectively and are positioned with the required batter. Horizontal and vertical braces are fabricated similar to legs. The X braces are positioned between the legs and welded to complete leg 2 and 3. Crawler cranes are then used to roll up the panels. Vertical braces are positioned and then welded to box up row 2 and 3. After the boxing up of panel 2 and 3, the set is jacked down and the legs 2A and 3A rest on the launch cradle and the leg pots are removed. Row 1 and 4 are fabricated in a similar manner and carried to the respective positions and placed over temporary leg pots. They are then rolled up and boxed up with row 2 and 3 respectively. 23 riser pipes are then placed and fixed in the clamps. Five each at the bottom between row 1A, 2A and 3A, 4A. Six and seven each between 1B, 2B and 3B, 4B respectively. The sump casein, fire water casein and utility water caseins are placed similarly at their respective positions. Crowd lines are installed to the skirt legs. Eok plates are fabricated. Then the mud mat is erected. Prefabricated buoyancy tanks are placed on the temporary leg pots on the sides of leg set 1 and 4. They are rolled up and fixed with the jacket structure. Flooding lines are connected to the buoyancy tanks and jacket from the flooding manifold. The upending slings and shackles are then placed in the upending pad eyes. 
All the final paintings are then completed. The gigantic jacket is now ready for loadout. The loadout process begins with extending the grillage and the skid beam to the quay wall. The 180 meters long S45 barge approaches from stern towards the quay wall. Fixed by the anchors and mooring lines, the rocker arms are brought in line with the skid beam by ballasting and deballasting of water. Four strand jack piston assemblies are fixed near the mud mat on the jacket. The strand wires coming from the piston assembly are fixed on dead man anchor frames on the barge. Two push jacks, one for each launch cradle, provides the initial breakup push. The piston moves ahead and holds the strand. The jack moves towards the piston, carrying the jacket. The ballasting and deballasting of water from the barge maintain the 25 millimeter tolerance. The high precision synchronized movements make the jacket crawl into the barge in tiny steps. Welding plates are fixed to weld the launch cradle with the skid beam of the barge. 28 C fasteners, 7 on each side of leg 2A and 3A, are welded to fasten the jacket on the barge. The barge is towed away by a tugboat. Four smaller tugboats move along with the barge to assist it during maneuvering. On reaching the destination, first the sea fasteners are removed and welded on the barge deck. Four ropes connect the four corners of the jacket with four tugboats. The S45 barge is ballasted and deballasted to create a tilt of around three degrees. This tilt initiates the skidding of the jacket into the water. The gigantic structure smoothly leaves the barge and falls into the sea. The primary and the secondary rocker arm show the steady slip without toppling the barge. After stabilizing, the four tugboats pull the floating jacket to the exact site of erection. The erection is facilitated by heavy lift vessel LTS 3000 by a JV between L and T and Sapura. The jacket approaches the ship from stern. The upending slings are held by the main block of the crane. The GPS, gyro box and the four LBL are placed in their respective positions which will now help in final positioning of the jacket. The flooding lines are connected to the flooding manifold through the pumps installed on main deck of the ship and water starts pouring into the legs and the buoyancy tanks. The jacket starts upending. The final position of the jacket is set by maneuvering the ship with the help of anchor wires. Once positioned, the rest of the legs and buoyancy tanks are filled with water, making the jacket sit on the seabed. A cargo barge carrying the piles is brought. The internal lifting tool lifts the pile from the top end and inserts into the corner pile guide. The pile slowly inserts into the pile guides. The underwater ROV monitors the movement of the pile under the water. The first set of piles, known as Z piles, are inserted into the corner legs. The second section of Z piles is first welded with the first section and then inserted. The pile section 1 and 2 puncture the rubber diaphragm of skirt leg and inserts into the seabed by its own weight. The buoyancy tanks are then lifted, water is ejected 
and they are removed from the jacket, put into a barge and taken away. Rest of the insertion is done through hammering as per the sequence decided by the installation contractor. Finally, the fourth section is a chaser pile which hammers the third set to the skirt leg. Thereafter, the chaser pile is removed by ILT. Once the Z piles are inserted, the pile crippers on the Z piles are activated. When piling is completed, the space between the skirt leg and pile is crowded using concrete poured by the kraut lines. The boat landing and barge bumpers are installed at the end. This completes the installation of the MNP jacket, one of the most prestigious, gigantic, high precision engineering marvels fabricated in less than 11 months is an example of years of expertise. Lawson and Tubro, Imagineering at its best.